Yep, this is the Razer Edge, and this is Razer's latest portable mobile gaming device. And as you can see, you can take it anywhere and game the way you want. The whole idea of this device is to give you mobile access to your gaming without having to refer your smartphone or your tablets or anything of that sort. And also its price point is supposed to be more uh, inclusive for gamers. Uh, so what do we have here? Let's first take a look at the hardware. Now the Razer Edge is not just one device, it's actually two. When you split it open with, you actually have the tablet itself and the Razer Kishi V2 Pro controller. Now, looking at the tablet face, it's got thick bezels. So just put that there, the bezels are thick and I'm not a big fan of that, but it's still a bright uh, display. 144 Hertz, so of course, fast refresh rates. This is very key, especially if you're playing high refresh rate games on Android or on GeForce Now, which actually supports that. There's a front facing camera, which honestly, looking at this video here, just skip it, it's not even worth it. This does have a 5,000 milliamp battery, uh, and at the back you can see six line vents, uh, three in the top, three in the bottom, uh, that also houses a fan underneath, which actually turns on and you can hear it most of the time while you're gaming, so a headset is more preferable. Now you do have buttons on the top, volume as well as also the power button. There is no fingerprint sensor, so you do have to punch in your security code each time, which is rather annoying. There are two speaker grills on either side. Uh, I feel like large bottom firing speakers, so this is loud and honestly, just take a listen. Man, Project Armstrong turned out to be a real bummer. I want a cool robot arm, not a target on my head. So we have that, and then we also have a USB Type-C port uh, with some fast charging. Charging is pretty solid, it's fast, uh, that's not an issue, but you care about specs and performance. So what do we have here, specs in this device here? We have the Snapdragon uh, G3X Gen 1 on this device. Remember this a few years back, I showed, the, I showed this device at uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit, uh, and this is the final iteration of what we actually have in-house. Uh, what does that give us for performance? Well, let's start off with our Geekbench 6 scores. So we have a single core performance of 1553 and multi-core of 3595. Now, you might go, wow, that's lower than what we have this year with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Yeah, but it's more in line with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 device. So it's in good categories to play Android games. Uh, when we now go to 3D Mark, we do have uh, a pretty low uh, score of 14, uh, 1450 roughly, which I've ran a couple of scores. I didn't get anything higher. I wish it was higher, but we have to see what performance brings to us. So when it comes to gaming performance, we're gonna be checking out a bunch of categories for you here. We're gonna start off, of course, with Android games. And uh, we went with just two that cover the spectrum. Call of Duty Mobile, which usually we run on a lot of systems to see how it performs. We're able to run this here, of course, at a solid 61 frames per second. You're going, but I've seen higher. And yes, you've seen higher at lower, of course, graphic settings. Uh, there is no higher graphic settings or there is no higher settings uh, for the higher frame rate yet, but I'm sure that will be updated. But it's quite capable, especially it looked like it wanted to go past 61 frames per second, which was good. Now, when we get to Genshin Main Pack, this one was quite interesting. Genshin actually played rather well all the way through, but I could not get it at a sturdy 60 frames per second. Um, it started at 61 and then it dipped down to about 56 frames per second. So it basically stayed around 56 game frames per second for my gameplay period, which was quite interesting. And uh, this is also where the fan kicked in and our temperatures 
went really high. The good thing here is when you're playing games on the Razer's Edge, uh, even, even Android games, you don't have to use your hands on screen. You can use the Kishi Pro and map that on there. So luckily, temperatures, I didn't have to feel it because I got 115 degrees uh, on the device on screen while the back was actually cooler because that's where the fan is. So high temperatures, just use the controller when you actually game with this device. Now, speaking of remapping with that controller, they do have the software there where you can go in and virtually map whatever Android game you want to that does not support native controllers, and you can go ahead and start remapping them. It's quick, pretty easy and very simple, and it works quite well. One thing to note is for the second camera, if you have a game that uses both uh, camera angles, then you just wanna make sure you turn that on. So that is actually pretty cool. Now, what else did we actually try? I went ahead and played some a PSP game, you know, of course, God of War, and that ran really well. And it, this, of course, was an emulator, and emulators run absolutely well on this thing, so not to worry there. If you really wanna get this for emulation uh, on the go, as well as also play your Android games, right? That's actually cool. This is a 5G device, and it, it's running on Verizon's network. And I was able to use this uh, device on the road with me. So big shout out to Danny Winger for capturing some of the shots. I like the fact that I could connect on 5G and play my Android games or of course my Xbox Game Pass games quite easily playing Forza Horizon. There was no stress, no breakdowns. And of course, depends on your connection, but it actually ran pretty well. Speaking of Xbox Game Pass, it really flourishes on the Razer Edge. This is pretty much built for it in the largest degree, and you can actually see it take full control of this device. It was very smooth, uh, there were no slowdowns, really, really performed well, and I like that about it. It just was very, very smooth. Whatever game I played actually played well, whether, you know, so those things and those aspects really stood out for me as where the true strengths of the Razer Edge is. Even with game streaming services like GeForce Now, where I was able to jump in and play Destiny 2, of course, uh, that actually played pretty smooth and took advantage of the 144 hertz display because on GeForce Now, I do have the service where I can get the higher refresh rate. Uh, and I, you can clearly see that when you're actually aiming down side shooting, all that fun stuff. So those are the caveats that really take advantage of what the system can do. Now, there's some downsides here because the other services that I'd like to use whenever I game, one of them is Parsec, the other is Steam, of course, using Steam remotely to play. Now, with Parsec, what I found out that is because my monitor is much larger um, in my office, it's very hard to actually scan through and access those games. So that is something to take note because it's gonna just try and mirror the, your monitor size. I have that massive LG 45 inch monitor. So bring that down to a small screen doesn't really translate. I did try it with my, my system at home. I was able to access Call of Duty. Also need to run an update, but I was able to access and I can actually play that way. So Prospect works. Steam on the other hand was actually the big bummer here. I was able to load it up and go ahead and start Doom Eternal. But if you notice, there was nothing showing on my screen. It said it kept on loading while Doom Eternal was running on my PC in the office. So hopefully that, that gets fixed. It's probably a software issue there because we know Steam Big TV works pretty well. So hopefully that actually gets gets fixed. When you game with this and you want to just listen without headphones, it does a really good job. Doesn't matter what you're playing. But you're probably asking me, what are the downsides to having this? Well, there are a few. One of them, of course, is the battery life. It drains quite heavily even when you're not doing anything. That's something that I just didn't really like with the Razer's Edge, especially if you now play a game like Genshin Impact on the highest setting, then you're gonna see that drain hit there uh, effectively. And also if you're streaming for slightly longer than just normal, and honestly, what I mean by that is maybe about 15 to 20 minutes, you're gonna notice a, a huge battery drain there as well. So that's something I didn't like. The fast charging is nice though, so that does complement that. I don't like the bezel on the screen. I didn't mention that earlier uh, in this video. Uh, plus, I think also again, the software from Razer is good, but still needs improvements because I would like to see just better mapping for games all around in general. Now, will I recommend the Razer's Edge? Um, 
it's a very interesting device to recommend because it, a lot of the things it does, your smartphone already does that. That is the biggest thing here. If you're a gamer, uh, you're most likely, uh, on mobile devices, you're most likely getting either a high-end smartphone or you're getting a gaming phone. So those actually d take away what the Razer, Razer Edge does. But if you're looking for a second device, that either is for maybe just for travel and you travel a lot and you don't want to use your phone at its price point i think it's it's pretty solid the wi-fi version is solid at 399 uh the 5g version at 699 to me is just a little bit much i wish it was 500 bucks uh but it then it works as a good secondary device uh for that gaming experience or if you're looking for a gaming device for your children uh, that is portable, that they can have access to, to game streaming services, stuff like that. This works out well there. I do want to see some improvements still on this device, especially on the display. I just wish it was better, bigger, and less clunky there. Um, because especially when you're watching movies and entertainment, it just feels very narrow in, in respect to, to what the screen size is. But I do like what it brings to the table and I'd like to see more from Razer and other companies in this very special space that uh, they've created. So if you have any questions, any comments about the Razer Edge 5G, let me know. If you picked one up already, what are your thoughts? Are you enjoying it? Are you using it? If you're deciding to pick one up, use our link down below and uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and always enjoy the entertainment.